Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to calculate the market price of bonds. And so, so far when we have valued the price of bonds using this price formula, we have only calculated them at their issue date or at the end of a specific coupon period. But sometimes a bond will need to be priced at a particular moment in time that takes place between the coupon periods, which is when the coupons are paid. Right, so sometimes someone will purchase a bond and it will take place between the time that the coupons would be made. Coupons are paid semi-annually, and so there's a lot of time in between the payment of each coupon where someone could purchase the bond. And so when a bond is priced between its coupon dates, we call that price the market price of the bond, and we represent it with P sub T, where T is a value between zero and one, and is measured from the last coupon payment. And so let me explain what that means. If we were to look at a timeline like this, where we start at some time zero, where a coupon would be paid, and then we have some time one, where a coupon would be paid, then time T would lie somewhere in between those two coupon periods, and that would represent the moment in time that the bond would be purchased. And so this time zero here, we're going to label with P sub zero, and essentially what P sub zero is, is the value of the bond or the price of the bond after the last coupon period or after the last coupon was made, right? And so that means that the price here at time equals one would be the value of that bond after the next coupon was paid. And so time T right here lies in between these two coupon periods. And so this market price P sub T that we wanna calculate would be found right here on our timeline. And so the question here is, how do we calculate this market price at time T between these two coupon periods? Well, what we can do is take this value of P sub zero, the value of the bond after the last coupon was paid, and we can accumulate it up to this point in time. And so here's what that would look like we would have that P sub T is equal to P sub zero times one plus the yield rate of the bond to the power of T, right? And we'll talk about what T would be equal to in a second, but what this does is it accumulates the interest from the yield rate on the bond from its last known value on a coupon date and brings it forward to that time in the future between the two coupon dates, right? And so then the value of T numerically would be a fraction where the numerator is the number of days since the last coupon was paid. So you would count the number of days from when P sub zero is calculated, and that would be divided by the denominator, which is the number of days in that coupon period, right? So you would count the number of days between when P sub zero was calculated and when the next coupon period would have been if the bond wasn't purchased in between the coupon dates. And so this formula right here is what we called price plus accrued. It is not the complete market price of the bond at this moment in time. In order to have the complete market price, we also need to account for a fraction of a coupon that would have accumulated or accrued to that time t. And that fraction of a coupon would be equal to that time t times the amount of the coupon, which is the face value f times the coupon rate r. Right, And what this will do is it will take the amount of the coupon and it will take a fraction of that because T will be a fraction that is between the values of zero and one. And so multiplying that fraction by this coupon is going to give us a fractional amount of that coupon, right? Because T is between zero and one, this will always be less than the actual amount that the coupon would be. Okay, and so what we have to do is take this price plus accrued and subtract out this fractional coupon. And so we will subtract T times F times R. And so then what we have right here is what we call the market price of a bond. If you wanna know the price of a bond in between coupon periods, this is the formula you will use. All right, so now that we have this formula, let's look into an example where we would use this formula so that you can see how this works and what type of scenario you would want to use it in. All right, so here's our example problem. We have that a bond with a par value of $1,000 has payment dates of January 21st and July 21st for each year of its term. The bond pays coupons at a rate of 8% semi-annually and matures on January 21st, 2009. Find the market price of the bond if it is sold on March 10th, 2007, given that the last coupon paid was on January 21st, 
2007, and the yield rate is 9% convertible semi-annually. All right, so there's a lot of information there to digest, but the most important part here that lets you know that we're calculating a market price, other than the fact that it asks us for the market price, is that we are given the specific dates of when the coupons are paid, right? We are told that this bond has payment dates of January 21st and July 21st for each year of its term. And then we are told that we wanna know the price of it on March 10th of a specific year, which is not one of our two payment dates. And so since we wanna price this bond, at a date that takes place between two payment dates or two coupon periods, we will have to calculate its price using the market price formula. And so let's draw a timeline here. I think this is going to be helpful to help us figure out what exactly is going on in this problem. First, we're told that the last coupon was paid on January 21st, 2007. So that's gonna be my first mark on the timeline here. What we're looking for is when the last coupon was paid when we wanna calculate the price and when the next coupon would be paid. That is how I would draw my timeline for these problems. And so the last coupon was paid on January 21st, 2007. So I'll label that up top here. We'll have 1-21-07. And then following the coupon dates that we were told in the beginning of this problem, that means that the next coupon would be paid on July 21st, 2007. And so that will be our other endpoint of this timeline we will have 7-21-07. And so then what would the date in between those two periods be? Well, that is the moment in time where we wanna calculate the price, right? We wanna find the market price of the bond if it is sold on March 10th, 2007. That is between these two coupon dates. And so our date in the middle here will be March 10th of 2007. All right, and so then the first thing that we wanna do in order to calculate this market price is to figure out what P sub zero would be, right? That would be the price of the bond at the time that our last coupon was made, which we know is January 21st of 2007. And so we wanna calculate P sub zero at that moment in time. And so how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to need our formula for the price of a bond. And remember that the price is equal to the face value times the coupon rate times a n bracket j, where j is the yield rate, plus the redemption value times the present value factor to the power of n using that yield rate j. All right, and so for the bond in this problem, let's try to identify all these different parts, and then we will use that to calculate this price, p sub zero, which is when the last coupon would have been paid before this bond is purchased on March 10th. All right, and so we're told that the bond is a par value of $1,000, and so that is going to be our face value as well as the redemption value because our problem doesn't state anything else about the redemption value. And so we are allowed to assume that those two values are equal. So we'll have that F is equal to C, which is equal to 1000. And then we're also told that the bond pays coupons at a rate of 8% semi-annually. Now remember, when you are given these rates for bonds, they are nominal interest rates convertible semi-annually. And so in order to figure out what R is equal to, right, that would be the coupon rate for this percentage, we have to divide that percent by two. So we'll have 0 0.08 divided by two, which is equal to 0 0.04. And so that will be our coupon rate. If you don't understand why we need to do that, I would recommend that you watch our video on bond valuation, as well as our video on nominal interest rates. Okay, and so then let's calculate our yield rate as well. We're told that the yield rate is 9% convertible semi-annually, and that is also a nominal interest rate that we need to divide by two. And so we will have that J is equal to 0.09 divided by two, and that will be equal to 0.045. All right, and so then the only other thing that we need to figure out here is our value of N. How many coupons are being paid in this scenario? And so that's not really clear at first, but the important line that is going to tell us what N is equal to is the second sentence of our problem, right? It says the bond pays coupons at a rate of 8% semi-annually and matures on January 21st, 2009. Okay, so when you're doing these problems, you want to identify the maturity date. That tells you when the term of the bond is over, right? And so what we wanna do in order to calculate N is count the number of coupons that would be paid or the number of coupon periods between that date where the last coupon was paid and the maturity date, right? So the last coupon was paid on January 21st of 2007 
and the bond matures on January 21st, 2009. So that is exactly two years apart. And since coupons are paid semi-annually, we know that there will be two coupons paid in each of those two years. And so two times two is four. And so that tells us that N, the number of coupons paid, is equal to four. All right, so now that we have all of these values for our price formula, we can calculate the price P sub zero on January 21st of 2007. Okay, so we will have that P sub zero is equal to this price formula right here, where the face value is 1000 times the coupon rate of 0 0.04 times the present value of an annuity immediate formula, where N is four, and we have bracket J, the yield rate, which is 0 0.04. Four, five, and we will add that to the redemption value of 1,000 times the present value factor using that yield rate of 0 0.045 to the power of n, which is four. Okay, and so if we were to write out this formula and this present value factor, we would have that this is equal to 1,000 times 0 0.04, which would just be 40 times this formula, which would be one minus the present value factor to the power of four, divided by 0 0.045 plus 1,000 times this present value factor, which would be one divided by 1.045 to the power of four. All right, and so when you plug this into your calculator, make sure to rewrite this present value factor to be what it is equal to. That will actually happen to be the same as this present value factor right here. So you could just replace this for this present value factor and then plug all this in your calculator and you would find that the price P sub zero would be equal to $982.06. Now I rounded off to two decimals, but keep this value in your calculator, right? Save it if you can, because we're going to need this later and you wanna keep as many decimals as possible so that when you calculate the market price, it is as accurate as it can be. Okay, and so let's clean up our work here. We now know that P sub zero or the price of the bond when the last coupon was paid is $982.06. All right, and so now we can use this value to calculate the market price of this bond on March 10th of 2007, right? And so we wanna calculate P sub T. And the formula to calculate that says that P sub T, the market price, is equal to P sub zero times one plus the yield rate, J, to the power of T minus T times the face value times the coupon rate. All right, and so if we use that to calculate this market price right here, we will have that P sub T is equal to this value of P sub zero, 982.06 times one plus the yield rate, which is 0 0.045. So we will have 1.045 to the power of T, which we will calculate in a second. And then we will subtract T times the face value which is 1,000 times the coupon rate R, which is 0 0.04. And 1,000 times 0 0.04 is just 40, and so I will replace that with 40. All right, and so now in order to calculate P sub T, we need to figure out what T is equal to. And so remember, T is valued as a fraction of the number of days since the last coupon paid, divided by the number of the days in the coupon period. And so in order to figure out what T is equal to, we have to count the number of days between January 21st of 2007 and March 10th of 2007. And then we will also need to count the days between January 21st and July 21st, right? That will be the denominator of our fraction because that will be the number of days in the coupon period. But let's start by counting the number of days between January 21st and March 10th. All right, so after January 21st, remember that there are 31 days in January. So that leaves us with 10 more days right from January 21st to the 31st, that would be 10 days. And then we would need to count all of the days in February, which for 2007, there are 28 days in February, right? 2007 is not a leap year. So there's only 28 days. So 10 plus 28 will be 38. And then we have 10 more days in March to count for, right? We cover January, February, now we need to cover March. And so it's March 10th. And so we will add those 10 days to our previous total of 38 days. And so 38 plus 10 is 48. And so there are 48 days between January 21st and March 10th of 2007, right? So the numerator of our fraction for T will be 48. 
and that will be divided by the number of days in our coupon period. And so now we have to count the number of days between January 21st and July 21st. All right, so I'll write it down this time so you can keep track of the days that I am counting. For January, there are 10 more days, right? If we're starting on January 21st and there are 31 days in January, like we said earlier, that means there are 10 more days in January to count. So we'll have 10. And then for February, there are 28 days. In March, there are 31 days. In April, there are 30 days. In May, there are 31. In June, there are 30. And then for July, we will only count the first 21 days because that's how many days into July we will be for that next coupon date. And so we will have 21, all right? And so if we add up all of these numbers right here, right, 10 plus 28 plus 31 plus 30 plus 31 plus 30 plus 21, that is equal to 181, all right? And so that means that there are 181 days between our coupon periods. And so that will be the denominator of our value of time. Okay, and so then just to recap, so you know where 48 came from, we would not have counted all of these days. We would have only counted up until the 10 days in March, right? We would have this 10. And so we were adding up the 10 days in January, 28 days in February, and the 10 days up until March 10th, where we are calculating our market price. So 10 plus 28 plus 10 is 48. Okay, so that's where those values came from. And so now that we have our value of T, we can replace T in this calculation for the market price with that fraction. And so I'll erase this T and this T, and we will replace it with 48 divided by 181, and then we will have 48 divided by 181 times this 40. Okay, and so then if you were to plug all of this in your calculator, right, this price times this quantity to the power of 48 divided by 181, minus that fraction times 40, you will find that P sub T is equal to $982.99. That is the market price of this bond on March 10th of 2007, a date that takes place between two coupon dates. All right, and so then in the grand scheme of things, you can kind of see how little of a difference this actually is compared to the price at the previous coupon date. Right, notice that the price P sub zero is 982 and six cents, but the market price is 982 and 99 cents, right? That is a difference of less than a dollar. And so it's not a huge difference, but it is necessary to calculate nonetheless. Okay, and so with that, that is all I had for this lesson on the market price of bonds. If you wanna see some more example problems, feel free to check out our examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.